Welcome to the show, Kevin Connolly. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. Um, so tell us a little bit about that story, all right? So you, you broke your leg. Yeah, it's funny to hear, to look back at that and hear the uh, – the rendition also, again, right, that we're coming out on that. It was seven years ago that, that yeah, they did this interview ago. in here. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so all right, what happened was, and, and the story goes, is that I was like essentially showing off in front of Russell Wilson, which, <laughs> you know, in hindsight, you know, I didn't see it that way at the time, but I guess in hindsight, you know, you could say I was showing off. I mean, we were, we're out on, the, on playing beach football and Doug Allen, who's the uh, executive producer and creator, director of the movie as well, he says, all right, listen, guys, I've been hearing you guys for eight years talk about foot speed and who's got better hands and this and that. So we're going to do one play on each side. Jerry's going to be on offense first. Kevin, you're going to cover him, and then we're going to flip it. So I think Jerry's going to go deep. I mean, what? You get a chance to do it one time. Are you gonna- one time. We, Jerry, okay, runs like a, a seven-step, and he – he cuts in. I was like, I, I, this is unacceptable. So I, and joking around, I just, I knew he was kind of mad too. I just laid, I just drilled him. I laid him and I buried him into the sand and uh, I could just feel his body tight up. I was like, Jerry, I was only kidding, bro. Don't be mad. You, you had to go along. Right. So we swip it, we swap it around. And uh, I say to Russell, I'm going, I wanted to do it. Uh, what would, what would be when you go deep, but you go like the a, other way, like a corner, like a deep corner, a route. deep corner. Yeah. Route. But we were there was like a cliff, and he's like, "I'm not throwing you a deep <laughs> corner. I'm not throwing you a deep corner out pass. It's you gotta, it's gotta be in, in, cut in." I'm like, "Okay, great." So run it, and he airmails it. Russell Wilson, I whatever, love Russell, world champion. He airmails it. He said it's because I was short. But I don't care who it was. <laughs> he, no one was catching it. Yeah, DeAndre no Hopkins catch. wasn't catching that. He was that. afraid. Okay. That he didn't want to hurt me in his, in his defense. So we get the second play. Now Jerry's still fired up because I because I viciously him. came out of the backfield and laid him down in the sand. Um, and it's funny because Jerry was talking about the imaginary play, but I don't know. It, it, it was. So I, I catch the pass. And I'm reaching for, I don't know what I was trying to... An imaginary goal line. What it looked like would have been the goal line based on nothing. And um, (laughs) he just kind of slid down my leg. But yeah, you know, and Jerry, we both heard it. Jerry said, what was that? I said, that was my leg. And and this is kind of disgusting, but the analogy I always use, you know when you get sushi, you know you you split Split, chops, chopsticks? chopsticks, Yeah. That's kind of what, that was sort of what it sounded like. But I'm laying there in in the dirt. It's very early on in the movie. It's a big movie. I think something like 60 people had flown in for these cameos. I mean, it's Brady, Gronk, Edelman, Tyson, Jim Gray. I mean, the Walbert, the list goes on and on. Everybody that you've ever known is there. And I'm laying face first in the sand going, my leg is broken. I'm in big trouble. So I had to kind of just like BS my way through the next few days. And thankfully, um, you know, I was wearing, I, we were at the beach, so I had sunglasses on. So I might have had to hit a cocktail to take a take a little bit of the <laughs> edge off the because edge <laughs> I was in fact working with a, my leg was broken in three places you know wow. and I literally walked around on it and it's funny there's one scene in the movie where you can see Kevin Dillon I just had to get to the other side of the room and Kevin Dillon had me by up. my belt and was like I was using him as a crush uh, as a crutch to get to my mark and then finally I tapped out I'm like guys my leg is banged up and yeah it was broken so um, Did they have to do surgery on it? Or? Oh, yeah, I got the plate, the screws, the whole bit, you know? Oh. Yeah, so so I can tell you when it's going to rain. You don't hear that, but it's true. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. I always oh, wild. no, I can, that's the, that's yeah. truth. Any any guy that's had surgery or a former football player, you know when the weather is so weird. turning. Right, because we have, like, black, I have, like, blackout shades, and I'll be like, I think it's raining. <laughs> it's I'm just thinking about, I'm, I'm thinking about gutsiest performances of all time. You know, you hear that. Story, Philip Rivers did the playoff game with a torn ACL. Right. Tiger wins the U.S. Open on a broken leg. Jack Youngblood. Connolly finishes entourage Entourage. with a broken leg and screws and pins in his Two and a half days I I did. I did two and a half days with the leg, and we were going into lunch on that third day. And I was like, they're like, all right, well, when we come back, we're going to shoot. And I said, you know what? I'm not. (laughs) I'm not coming back. You're going to shoot. I'm leaving for lunch. I'm going to the hospital. So what? Because I'm dying. What what happened with that? Did they have to do some rewrites or did they just postpone some shooting or just shoot around you for the time being? Yeah. Well, I went, I went, when I went to the doctor, he's like, listen, you know, you need surgery. Uh, You're going to be in a cast. I said, I I can't be in a cast. What are you talking? I can't. I'm like, we're. Doing this thing. He said, I don't a, know what you want me to tell you. A huge budget movie here. Yeah. He said, you need surgery. So what we did was, actually, I only missed a couple days. We did the surgery and then we just 
did all um, the shots Shot you above, from knee above up. the knee. And then when we went back with the insurance, because it's funny, you know, the insurance company goes through and, you know, it was on film. It's funny because Jerry's right. It didn't make the cut of the movie, which right. is terrible. Um, but they went back and, you know, so they get the insurance claim. And then we just did like a few days of, of just a bunch of shots of me walking. So luckily you didn't have any uh, scenes with uh, you and some of the special ladies in uh, uh in the bedroom. No, I did. <laughs> Ooh. I did a scene with, uh, I had to do a scene like that with a broken with a leg. Bro- with a cast on? No, my, it was the day I broke my leg. Wait a minute, <laughs> oh, the scene yeah. at the beginning of the movie where you're in your, your room? No, no, no. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> at the beach house when Ronda Rousey and Jerry walk in the room. Oh, so uh, that and, um, <laughs> Your leg was broken for that? My leg was broken. Wow. Three, Front of us, Ronda might have looked at you and just said, hey. Way to tough it out. Well, no, you know, well, funny, funny story about Rhonda. But the funny thing was that I was sitting there and the girl, I, I couldn't move. So we had to do a thing where she was sort of on top of me. And I was like, ow, ow. And she kind of rolled her eyes at me as if I was being dramatic. <laughs> like, I'm not that I was big. like, no, really, I, I swear I think my leg's broken. She's like, okay, hey, okay, what do you want me to do about it? Sorry, your leg's broken. Um, but Rhonda knew that I had kind of worked through it. And then, uh, like, at some other point, when Rhonda was promoting the movie, I don't know what podcast she was doing, they said, uh, who would be the last guy to tap out? And Rhonda was like, you know, Jerry's going to kill me, but, you know, I think Connolly taps out, taps out last. Yeah, it sent ripple waves through the, uh, wow. the entourage crew. So, what an but um, it was great, man. It was fun. It, it, uh, for all of you out there, uh, we're talking about the Entourage movie with Kevin Connolly here. Um, the show was such a hit for so long. And right. it, it really kind of put HBO on the map again, really, at the time. It was before yeah. Game of Thrones. It was before it, it just became this instant hit for uh, for pretty much everybody. Generationally, it didn't matter who was watching it. People seemed to enjoy it. And what was that like for you? Uh, you've been acting your whole life. Right. You know, I go, I watched you in, in Rocky Five and, right. and, 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 and up to this point. And now it's you guys are the talk of every talk show on the cover of every magazine and it's the biggest hit in America. Yeah. And and, you know, for people that know anything about like the television business, you do a pilot, right? Right. So it starts with one episode and, and I've done a bunch of pilots before. Right. So you don't, I don't know. It's not, it's not that I didn't think the pilot was good, but you, you learn to manage your expectations, right? I've done some excellent pilots that never saw the light of day. So it was the show got picked up, but you know, I, and I think the experience was different for everybody. But certainly for me, the show aired on a Sunday night, and and my life uh, was never the same. Like starting the next morning when I woke up, which was r- really kind it's, of it's kind of like it just happened. Yeah, it's kind of like being drafted into the NFL draft. Right. I mean, it just boom. It boom. Just your life happened. changes forever. Yeah. Everybody yeah. knows who you are. Uh, everybody thinks you're a multimillionaire immediately. <laughs> That's true. Too. Yeah, exactly. But the the, the other um, part about it is like I, you know. And, you know, TJ will tell you, like, I, I was running, kind of running around, so I was around town anyway. So it kind of, for me, the hardest part was, you know, the, like I always said, there's nothing worse than getting chased by paparazzi that aren't trying to take a picture of you, right? <laughs> like, running from paparazzi, like, I would always be part of the, like, the getaway where they're not chasing you, and then all of a sudden, you are kind of in that, and that was, it took a little... uh Adjusting. It, it was incredibly because... hard to adjust to that. I remember walking out of the house that I rented in San Diego, and right. there's a news van with a satellite dish on it parked at the bottom, and they were just following me around wherever I went. How do you, how do you prepare for something like this? At least you'd been in the business a bit right. during your whole life. But you know, remember this was like at the crack of the of the. God, we're dating ourselves here. The crack of the internet. Yes. Really, I, I, I can, can remember one night I walked out of somewhere. I don't know. I was probably with. We, was probably, we were probably together somewhere. <laughs> I walked out. I walked out of this place, and there was a guy with a camera. And I was joking with him. I said something, and then the next morning I start getting these calls. I'm like, "What is this?" They're like, "Oh, you're on this website. You got to check it out. It's called TMZ." <laughs> yeah. It was the first time I ever heard wow. TMZ. It was like, and now it's you know obviously yeah. TMZ has become this whatever. But um, you know, remember this is like. Twitter or Instagram, this all happened while we were on the show. Kev, remember they used to have Hollywood uncensored first. Right. Before, and then that kind of transitioned into Celebrity, or was like, celebrities, yeah, celebrities uncensored. uncensored. Yeah, yeah. Celebrities how, mad uncensored. Was that, how mad was <laughs> yeah. that guy when Harvey turned around? But yeah, so um, all of that stuff happened while we were on the show. So it was, it was kind of strange. And, and truthfully, you know, some of these kids today, how they deal with it, I, I don't, I think that some of these 
people don't get the credit. Like I, I don't know for, for to see like what a guy like Justin Bieber goes through. I mean, well, I, I don't think, know. I don't know that I, I would be built for that. Well, I mean, he 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 struggled with it too. Ever? Yeah, but that's like so. The internet now is so next level and so crazy. I don't know. Not for me. You no. know, Ryan. I think that you know. I was having a talk with some of my friends about this, and I think the the difference is the kids today. They welcome that stuff like they they want those cameras on they they want to be filmed in the club you know if we were back in joseph's or ad back in the day someone pulled out a phone you know pantera slayer would slap you in the head but you now it's like it right. th- these influencers they want that attention so they they want to be chased down the street we're back in the day guys like you you it was like nah man we're doing our thing back up woody or whoever the you know the camera guy was yeah back then probably for us it was more about picking your spots with it. Like there were moments where I didn't want anybody to see what was going on, but right. the narcissist in me still was like, Hey, look at me. Look at me. Why aren't you looking at me? <laughs> right. <laughs> well, we talked about it. Like, you know, back in those days, it was went, went, went. Yep. Right. If yeah. you heard that at the club, you got in trouble. You know, now these phones and how anybody can navigate through anything. It's, it's just, uh, it's, uh, you it's have to be on point, uh, at, at all times. Kevin Connolly and I were just talking about, um, uh, my podcast bust that uh, in the height of COVID uh, Kevin had joined a golf club called mountain gate country club. I had been there um, and I saw an, a time on the, the, the tee sheet the night before that was open uh, at like six thirty. Yeah. You and I were early guys. Yeah. We're yeah, always we, first tried to be the first ones out. Yeah. So um, I, I saw the name, right. But I didn't, I didn't, I didn't think to, I didn't, I didn't think it was, was Kevin Connolly. <laughs> uh, so I showed up, and I have my head down, and all of a sudden I hear your voice. Right. And then I, boom, I picked up immediately. And I'm like, it is that Kevin Connolly. Well, I remember you because you were you, it, smartly, co- very COVID sensitive, right? So you, Ryan didn't wear like a mask. He like had the, he wore like a full head wrap. <laughs> all you saw was his eyes. But like once he stood up, I'm like, oh, that's definitely him. Yeah. I mean, you know, Ryan is, he's a big guy. And certainly when, when he hit the ball, but we, we hit it off and we started playing golf a few days a week. Yeah. Uh, in the morning, and I was telling you a little bit about what, what, what you were I doing. was working on with uh, Action Park Media and sort of. And, and I kind of just said that, uh, and I remember telling you in it this way, I said, I think we could do something that could really help people. And um, so we kind of started out on this adventure together. And I came in to the studio and we started to kind of lay down some some audio just to kind of give us a story frame. Right. And I remember when you uh, when you texted me and you said, I, I didn't fully understand what you meant when you said we could help people. Well, uh, again, that, that's the the nicer version of the story. And, and I always kind of feel bad about this, but you know, I'm looking at the story and I, and I said to Ryan, I said, man, this is a great idea. We could, we could make some, some money here. Ryan said, <laughs> and, and we can help people. I was like, yeah, that's what I meant. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we help can, people. Yeah, yeah. Financially, uh, <laughs> spiritually, uh, you know, but Ryan was all about right away. His first thought was, I need to get this message out there because it can help people. And it, it's funny because in your first thought, you think it's a, it's a sports podcast. And of course, it's the backdrop of sports, but it really is not. It's it's mental health and and self-help and and kind of laying it all out there. And I've always said, you know, Ryan is, um, again, I don't know if it's apo- unapologetically apologetic or apologetically unapologetic, but you want to hear the story? Here it is, warts and all. You know, so not easy to do. Right. I mean, you put well, I, well, I think this is there's a there's a point to this. Right. Uh, I had to trust you. Right. And we had to we had to develop a friendship. And right. I, and it was I think I said, like I said, we met at the perfect time. Right. You know, where we were we were, you know, dealing with life and life brought us together to give us something special. And and we've got to experience a ton of stuff. Um, uh, you, you you know, you know, my personality probably better right. than anybody. So when we step into that into that uh, room it's just Kevin and I, guys. That's it. Right. Kevin and I in this room, and he literally just, if there was something he needed verified or or cleared up, right. he would say something. Otherwise, it was me in front of a microphone uh, spewing my story. Yeah, when we would clear out the studio, I'd say, listen, anybody that doesn't absolutely need to be here, yeah. you know, just take the rest of the day off or whatever, because, you know, especially as we got further down the road and into your journey, it became a little bit more... What was, a little bit more intense. What was funny is Trevor, our editor, right. like had no idea, doesn't, didn't know anything about sports at right. all, right? <laughs> and you were like telling him like, and he's like, this is great. This is funny. This is so, and you're like, you just, you just buckle wait. Buckle up. Just, wait just buckle up. Episode six. Because <laughs> <laughs>
It's about the good. I mean, and, and it's funny, like, you know, the, the stuff does start off kind of fun. With, right. You know, I'm yeah, sure you, you talk about it, but also people, you know, you were a good basketball player. Yeah. I mean, you don't really talk much about that, but you were like, you know, we had a guy who was jamming on, dunking on people. Yeah. He was broken we backboard. Guy, we had a guy come on the show who played against me and remembers me breaking a backboard in high school. <laughs> Did you really? They, 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 they called in the other day and I was like, I, I almost forgot about it. I have never really told anybody about it. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, no, it's it, it, it. the beginning part of it is fun. Uh, you know, if you've listened to the podcast or not. So, you know, they have like an A team and a B team mm-hmm. in football. Obviously, Ryan played on the A team, but he would go and show up and play with the B team. But he would only be a defensive back and he wouldn't let anybody complete a pass. <laughs> <laughs> he would just be in the backfield picking right. off every ball thrown <laughs> and just... All the parents are like, hey, what is he doing here? Why is he playing, right? Why is my kid being embarrassed by the kid that just, you know, was the quarterback of the team the other day? I, I mean, I, I just, it was competing. Competitive side, yeah. Compe- competitive and listen, side. We, were, we it's still there. I mean, come on. We we lost it. We lost, we did get knocked out in the first round of our tournament. I and I played in a golf tournament yeah. together, but. Well, let's let's tell the story. Right. Okay. So, so we, uh, he had never played in a tournament before, really. And so I invited him to play in the match, uh, kind of uh, partner match play tournament. And uh, and we were excited. But what we didn't find out is that the pro shop or the the pro the professional made it made it. I think rule that's that, pretty standard, though, I've, as I've come to find as I've out. come to find out, right. too. It is pretty standard that you can't have your partner can't be more than 10 strokes different than you on your handicap. Uh, so I'm a 17 and Ryan's a two. Right. So I had to play at a 10, 12 or 12 you had to play yeah. at a 12. Right. So, so he, lost, giving, yeah. he lost five, six strokes. Yeah. And he played so good that day. we should have won we, we could we, we should have won, won. If, if, they, if they had his extra strokes we would have won and i didn't i didn't necessarily play that great um it's hard to when you're a two i mean you have to shoot 74 and if you shoot a 78 it's it's not it's not great you lose four strokes no i'm not saying so it, it, the, the handicap is stacked against the better golfer but you i didn't know i'd never played uh match play and when we lose ryan shakes the guy's hand he's like hey good luck next week i was like what do you mean like ryan's like oh they advance i'm like we're, we that's it. We, we, that, I didn't know. I didn't know. It was like that. Like, so if we would have beat those guys, we would have went on to the next round. Yeah, I didn't. Oh, he didn't man, know that. that. Hurt. I did not know. But the round started with we pull oh, up. Boy. We pull up to the uh, first oh, tee. Okay. Ryan and I were the bad boys at Mountain Gate, the Mountain Gate Country Club. <laughs> they saw us on the tee sheet. They were, nobody wanted to play. It was just us two. Nobody we, wanted. To we play. pull up. And Kevin kind of parks his next to mine. You know, and we're just kind of sitting there talking. Then he, oh then, he then he walks forward to to do something or the other. Well, carts are trying to come back the other way, and so I just jump in his cart and move it in front of mine. So it's there's a pathway for the other carts to come by. Sure. But as I'm moving it forward to the front, there was a guy on the tee, which was probably. I don't know, maybe 50 yards ahead of us. Like, it was mo- one of the more ridiculous things I've, I've seen. And I get out of the cart and I, l- I look, and the guy who was about to hit, he's a middle aged man, and he, all of a sudden he just kind of starts throwing a fit and, like, going, like, oh my God, this guy's making noise. And, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> making, making and I see it out of the corner of my scene. eye, and I don't know. I mean, it's, I just, I just, I look at him and I go, dude. <laughs> It's not the effing masters. Yeah, like and he and the he ball. But he also stands up, and that's yeah. the game changer when he stands up, yeah, right? So, I'll 6-8 them. But, but, you know, it's <laughs> setting the stage. Like, it's the first, it's a, it's a tournament. It's the first hole. Everybody, every, there was 50 dudes out there. And I'm like, look at all these smiles on these. Everybody was so happy just to be <laughs> out there. And the tournament is starting. And Ryan slides into my golf cart. By the way, it's not it's not a Corvette. It was it's whisper quiet. Yeah. Ryan glides yeah. With <laughs> my, golf cart. my golf cart out of the way. Whisper and the quiet. guy starts flipping out, screaming bloody murder. And uh and then he they moved on. And then when they found out later on that it was was that really Ryan? Was that really Ryan Lee who yelled at me? <laughs> yeah. Right. Well the, the guy wouldn't play then. He wanted the head pro to come out to, to stop the tournament stop and the made tournament. the pro come out. Made the pro come out. The pro comes out. I'm finally back in my cart eating my <laughs> breakfast, right? I finally calmed down a little bit. And the, the pro asked me, What's going on here? And I was like, man, he he's throwing a fit. He won't play. Uh, I probably could have handled it right, better. Right. So Ryan says the pro's like, What's going on, guys? And Ryan's like, you know what? For my end, I could have handled it better. I could have handled it better. This guy is now lighting Ryan up. Finally, I did. I, I couldn't listen to it no. anymore. I jumped in. I'm like, hey, you said some things yourself, buddy. Come on, man. You didn't do anything to put that situation <laughs> away, right? So, But the guy still doesn't. It takes him a second to dawn. So a couple holes later, he's like, was that really Ryan Lee for so then a couple of days later, Ryan is like, hey, man, did you get a call from the uh, general manager? The general manager? I'm like, no, why? He's like, apparently that guy was scared of us. I'm like, he wasn't scared of me. <laughs> no, I didn't get that call, Ryan. Uh, I don't 
off the guy. I think he was making sure that he was all good with you. But. Yeah, it was a fun way to start. He played great. Uh, it was cool to see him compete, uh, and we had a lot of fun. It was fun. Yeah. I, you know, if I would have known that, you know, but it was good. We, yeah. we almost won. I mean, by the way, the guy got lucky on a ridiculous putt on whatever. But. Remember, he buried that from like 80 feet. Yeah, was... like off the fringe and, you know. A guy who had a, a better handicap than me getting strokes on holes that I didn't get. Yeah, that's but, uh, that's not that's not fair. That's not fair. I should have been a worse golfer and had a higher handicap as well. Yeah, what that's what, now I can understand why people. Well, you got to find a next time you play in a tournament, you got to find a, a teammate who's like a seven or an eight. But some people try to get their actual handicap up before they go. Oh, play I know they're called sand, they're called sandbaggers. Is that really? Oh, <laughs> yes. that's, that's, that's there's the a term for it. Yeah. Okay. And I can't do it. Like I like if there's a round sometimes that I'm playing and I'm playing poorly, I just quit the round and leave. I could have played it out and shot like an 88 and it would help my handicap go up, but I'm right. so damn competitive. Right, I'm so right, right. angry about playing poorly that I'll leave. I can't post my score, which would have pushed up my handicap and my handicap sits at, at a two. Right. And I can't win a lot of money in anything with the two handicap. <laughs> right. If you don't shoot a basically a perfect round, you lose. Yeah. 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 Golf, and, golf, golf talk golf here. Talk. That's why right. everybody Sorry. lies about their handicap. And, and Ryan, that's not even probably the weirdest car story that Kevin has with someone Oh no! Studio, you guys, you guys right? told that story last time. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, yeah, it, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you know. Every time I drive by that corner, I think about you. <laughs> I really do. I think it's so funny. Right on the corner of uh, La Cienega, right by uh, yeah, right tra- by Trashy Lingerie, tra- right? Tra- right by Trashy Lingerie. Trying to steal his car. I thought he just had a messy car. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know, whatever. My yeah, car's was, pretty messy. My he's car's like, messy? It's no, no, messy? No, no, no. He's like, no, no, Somebody no, no, broke in here so. and ripped this thing apart. <laughs> the steering column. I mean, yeah, it was, one night we, it was one night we were all out. It was I was with Ashton, and he calls me, and he's like, hey, I'm going to area. And I just so happened to be on that street. And so he was like... Don't even violate. Just park here and we'll save money. Like Great this spot dude, too. with all the money in the world is worried about me saving <laughs> right. 20 bucks. And the thing was, it wasn't even my car. It was Wilmer Valderrama's yeah. ass oh, laid in. I parked it and then we went to area and then me, Kevin, and Ashton end up going some other place, which I'll, I'll talk about that in the book one day. <laughs> and, and then Kevin gets a, a text like, hey, there's a party in the hills. You want to go? And I'm like, yeah, I'm down. So Ashton drops us off and Kevin and I get to the car and I open the door and I'm like, oh, my God. What? So you guys, and, you guys, and, and, I've and never seen I've never seen that happen. I mean, professionals, yeah. they drilled through the lock. They got into the steering column. They ripped they were it out. In, they probably saw us walking up or heard us coming. Yeah, man. It was, them off. it was crazy. I never. And then I had to, you know, call a tow truck at like three in the yeah, morning. We had sat there. I was like, yo, I'll meet you guys at that party. Yeah, and Kevin was like, all right, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the car, man. Body story. The cops are just like, they're looking at the, the paperwork. And I'm like, this is registered to Wilmer Valdez. <laughs> yeah, and I'm thinking yeah. I'm going to jail. And luckily Ashton was just sitting there on the side of a building and they noticed him and then they start making punk jokes. So like <laughs> it was cool for them. So I was like, all right, I'm not going to go to jail, but I still got to tell this dude who's in New York that your car almost got jacked last night. Right. So. You, you, yeah. they were accusing you of stealing an almost stolen car. <laughs> right. Right. <Yeah. laughs> Wonder why. Um, this uh, project that you've uh, started, you started a company called Action Park Media, right? All right, and uh, essentially, it's a, a bit of a, a, an incubator for for podcasts and developing content, right? Uh, kind of tell us about it. you started. Was the first podcast you decided to go with was was it the Victory Podcast based in the Entourage? Well, yeah, we had a we had a few early on. We did a American Glutton with Ethan Suplee. We've had a we've had a, we've had a few of them, but the idea was always to sort of generate the IP, and you know, um, you know, we did something called the Dossier about. You know the LA Rampart scandal. We sold Fox, and we're gonna. You know, we're we're moving forward with 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 Boss. Hopefully, get that get that set up somewhere. But the idea is to to um yeah to develop the IP because it's tough to compete with these. You know, it's such a tough market, and these studios, these places have so much money. It's hard to compete with them. So um yeah, that's it. But in but in the meantime, you get into these. You know, I, I don't want it to feel like it's got a negative connotation, but the kind of talking head podcast, right? They do really well. You know, and they uh, they pay the bills and they keep the lights on. So uh, while we're waiting for our our movie deal on bust, we're gonna be doing uh, we're gonna be talking some entourage. We're gonna be talking some some and, stuff. And entourage really had a resurgence during the pandemic when everyone was stuck at home. Right? I rewatched it. Yeah, you know, it's it's really it's it's true. It's strange because like you, you get people that come up to you and I'm thinking like. Well, that's impossible. You're, you can't. You, you can't. Well, you weren't alive, right? So, and, but so, yeah. I think you know, just the people. Look, the people discovered a lot during the pandemic, and uh, yeah, there was kind of a, another, uh, like another push. 
for Entourage? Well, I was looking for content to watch, of course, during the pandemic when, when, when you know, you were locked away and stuff like that. But then when after I met you two, I was just like, ah, all right, I'm going to throw it on. See what, <laughs> see, see what, see what this is about. And then I ultimately, I came away thinking like, like this show, this, this show is about Eric's character. That's what this show is about. It's it. Everybody else kind of fits through, but it, ultimately, it, it, I thought it ended up being a show about you. Yeah, I mean, well, it's about, it's called Entourage, right? So yeah. it's really like, if, if, you know, if it's, Piven is world class and, you know, and you have Adrian and, but, but it's about, you know, Jerry, Dylan and myself are like the actual Entourage, yep. you know? So, um, but I do, I do have a question for you. Um, are you ready to, to, to talk about my dolphins yet? Or do we want to yes. pretend like you're not? No, okay, okay. <laughs> I, you're right. I was going to look at this. I, I mean. you got to be pretty happy. I, I mean, are you ready to to, to to jump on this wagon yet? Because you've been not. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not unwilling to jump on your wagon there. here. You've been giving me a hard time. I have not been giving you a hard time. You talk, you call me and ask me questions. <laughs> and I just, I just, I'm pragmatic with you. I'm not. Okay. I don't want well, to. I don't want to be lied to. I want your honest opinion. Right. Okay. Right. It, it was going to be a struggle with Tua. All okay. right, it just was. I, adding Tyreek Hill is a huge, huge factor in this. Waddle, splitting it up. Who if he gonna... can't do it with this skill set with him around him, I don't know what to tell you, Kev. Right. Do you think they win 12 games? Like next year? <laughs> That's no, a- in 2027, <laughs> yeah. Next year. I mean, they won. They, you know, listen, they got Tyreek Hill. They got Waddle. They got... They picked up uh, Mostert from the. They got a backfield. They got a defense. I mean, it, it, well, but, uh, wow. What did they, they, they win last year? Eight. They went. They went nine and eight last. Oh, year. They went nine and eight last year. Yeah, eight in a row. Right? This team. Yeah, one eight if, in a row. If, if 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 Tyreek is Tyreek worth three wins? Vegas has Miami's win total at nine. Okay. What? Taking the over. Yeah, I'm going over. Well, you're you're sure. you're you're a diehard Dolphins fan. Um. Wow. No, I like it. I but that that division is is a battlefield, man. It's tough. You know, the the Jets just reloaded like crazy in the draft last night. I, they're still the Jets, don't get me wrong. I'm not I'm not I'm not, you know, drinking that Kool-Aid yet. <laughs> but Bill Belichick, uh that team made the playoffs a year ago. The Buffalo Bills, they're, yeah. they're unstoppable right now. Exactly. And they kept Stefan Diggs. They drafted a corner. Uh this team's going to be hard and they got to play Miami twice. New England and my uh, the Bills play them twice. Right there is four losses. You need that. You know, that doesn't necessarily mean four losses. <laughs> I four mean, losses. usually. But you need, I mean, you know, the thing about Buffalo is like, you, you almost like need that heartbreaking loss, right? And they had it. I, I, I think they're going to be, I think the Bills are going to be deadly. But who knows? I, 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 I'm, I'm surprised. I like your chances. Nine. Okay. Right. I like your chances. And when it's all said and done next Playoffs? year. Well, I don't know if they're going to make the playoffs. Okay. I, I like your chances. If they're able to be better with who they have, that means Tua is going to have to play it at an elite level. This is it. He's got it. This is this is the so make or break it year for him. For him. Yeah, last, last dance, dance for him. If he can't get it done, they'll go about their business and find a quarterback that can come in. And it sure sounded like they were trying to make it Tom Brady, Tom Brady. this offseason. So <laughs> could that happen? Well, his like, contract well, will be up next like, year. Right, at a certain point, what do you mean next year? At a certain point, we got to stop, start 40, thinking that Brady is a good old Tom Brady. Right? It's like, <laughs> no, he's coming to Miami next year. Like, what? Well, you just talked about catching a pass and breaking your leg one time playing football, right? Right. I mean, dude's going to be 45 years old. Right. Uh, and but can he play two? Is he playing two more years, Brady? I dude, watch him play five more. Right. God. He, yeah, he's going to 50, man. He is a freak of nature. Um, if, all right, let me ask you this. Lastly, if, the, if Brady were the quarterback with this team and, and uh, that the Dolphins have, do you think that they – or does that change the landscape? They could the win landscape? the Super Bowl. They could win the Super Bowl. Yep. Really? Yes. Okay. The weapons they have on offense, the defense that they have. Okay. Uh, I like their head coach. I really do. So you have – you have you have, you have – are, you're allowed to have some optimism heading okay. into this season. I'm allowed all right? to have some optimism. All right. Okay. Hey, buddy. Oh, hold on to that. Hey, thanks for coming on in uh, and taking the pleasure. time, man. My it's pleasure. so good to this see you um, and uh, um, and being a part of the show today. Great setup you guys got here. What a fun place to come to work. Really thanks for listening, everybody. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.